Hey guys, it's Bree. I have been reading a lot of classic dystopians lately, um, namely books like A Clockwork Orange and Brave New World. And it's got me thinking a lot about the role of behavior modification in dystopian and science fiction literature. For those of you who aren't very familiar with the kind of more basics of behavior modification, what that is, is when you change the way somebody acts or reacts given a certain stimulus. Most of the work that this is done off of at its very roots is based off of a man named Pavlov. He's most famous for the Pavlov's dog experiment. Pavlov had a group of dogs who he was researching on. Pavlov was a physiologist and a physiognomist who studied responses in animals, specifically regarding the digestive tract. One of the things that they noticed was that the dogs would salivate at the smell, scent of food. And during his research, he attempted to recreate this response with other stimulus. This was the very kind of basic roots of what we would now consider behavior modification or behavioralism. Over time, Pavlov's work has been expanded upon, adjusted, and worked with by a variety of different fields. Some of the most notable works are B.F. Skinner, who created a, a branch of psychology called behavioralism, and then also Bertrand Russell, who took these kind of biological responses and the ways that the brain was adjusting to them and use that to create kind of a more modern version of logic in philosophy. But Pavlov didn't just use dogs and bells, he used a variety of different stimuli, as well as dogs, a variety of other animals, and young children. In more modern psychology, we see the kind of descendants of Pavlov's work in things like aversion aversion behavior therapy, what's called flooding or adaptive behavior therapy, um, things like exposure therapies, which will desensitize people to certain reactions. So these have been used to treat things like smoking cessation, um, obsessive compulsive disorders, and a variety of other illnesses and habits to varying degrees of success. What's very interesting is that this work that's kind of based off of animal behaviors has been further studied. Recently, work has been done with both foxes and wolves to see what kind of behavior modifications last. Behavior selection, which has been done largely in both foxes and wolves, has been something that has long lasted. So scientists have chosen traits and bred for those traits. This is something that's not at all unusual. We've seen this in any kind of dog breeding or domesticated animal breeding. What's interesting is work that's being done more recently with wolf pups. As pups, these wolves are hand-fed and certain behaviors are encouraged by scientists. I'll link this information down below. NPR did a really great piece. What they saw is that these juvenile wolves would respond to those stimuli and they would come to, you know, show better communication skills with the researchers who are doing the work. What's interesting though, is that when the wolves mature, they leave these younger, more juvenile traits behind and they start to show more reluctance towards humans. Additionally, the kind of responses that we are used to seeing in wolves are still just no longer there. They're not built that way. So wolves still don't necessarily come to associate humans with food. And when they are pups, those associations don't always last into adulthood. What this means for a variety of different behavioral traits and modifications can, you know, is yet to be seen. But science fiction and dystopian literature loves behavior modification and Pavlovian conditioning. Great examples of these are in Brave New World, where the 
behaviors and associations. Um, things like anger are come to be associated with differentness and are encouraged through repetitive behaviors that are done as a group, although that has an entire different couple of branches of psychology that are also coming together in that. You also see more direct instances of Pavlovian conditioning in something like a clockwork orange, where the nausea response towards violence is being used to change the way that inmates see violence. It's a really scary thought to think that somebody can change the ways that you see things and the ways that you make decisions on such a fundamental and visceral level. And it's scary because how many decision-making processes do you have to change in a person before they're no longer themselves? If you can change just my favorite color, am I still me? So how much do you have to change for you to stop being you? Or is the scary part, part just that someone can change you without your permission? I think both are kind of scary, but I don't know which is kind of more significant philosophically. But let me know what books you think are good in this. Let me know how you feel about behavior modification. Is it something that we should be worried about? Do you really think that, is it feasible for the government to do behavior modification or conditioning on a large scale? scale? Do you think it has the same impact on an adult as a child? Let me know your thoughts on this. I will talk to you guys later. Bye.